friends welcome to my channel prostoha myself dr jolsna and through this channel i discuss some of the important prosthodontic topics both short notes and long essays which you might find useful for your exam preparation so this is the final session of our topic temporomandibular joint disorders and management so in the previous session we have been discussing the management of some of the common clinical tmds and there we discussed developmental disorders articular disc displacements tmj arthritis rheumatoid arthritis subluxation dislocation and ankylosis and in this session we'll be discussing about mpds so before getting into detail i request everyone to please do like and share my videos and if you are new to this channel prosto hub please do subscribe to my channel and support me if you have any queries or feedbacks you can either comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id so let's begin so mpds or myofascial pain dysfunction syndrome is the most commonly seen condition among temporomandibular disorder so this is actually a disorder in which unilateral pain is referred from the trigger points in the myofascial structures to the muscles of the head and neck so these trigger points are actually tight highly irritable points in a taut band of muscle and there is a referred pain that is the pain that is away from the trigger point here you can see the trigger point complex that is a hyper irritable spot that is usually within a skeletal muscle so this is a, a hyper irritable spot or the trigger point and these are localized tender areas usually 2 to 5 uh, mm diameter points of increased hypersensitivity in palpable bands of skeletal muscle tendons or ligaments and which get stimulated by micro or macro traumatic episodes coming to the etiology of mpds which is multifactorial it can be due to the skeletal muscle or masticatory muscle spasm the occlusal irregularities psychological stress and increase or decrease in the vertical dimension parafunctional habits traumatic joint sleep disturbances etc so all these etiologic factors leads to micro or macro trauma to the musculoskeletal system leading to the muscle spasm and this hypertonicity lead to muscle fatigue and also accumulation of metabolic by products resulting in pain and discomfort let us see the pathophysiology of mpds so as we have said all the etiologic factors cause micro or macro trauma to the musculoskeletal system and this result in hypertonicity of muscle and the hypertonicity lead to muscle fatigue and accumulation of metabolic by products like lactic acid prostaglandins bradykinins and histamines and the accumulation of these chemical pain mediators lowers the pain threshold to mechanical and chemical stimuli leading to mpds next is the clinical features of mpds so laskin has proposed four cardinal signs and negative characteristics for mpds the four cardinal signs include unilateral dull pain masticatory muscle tenderness clicking or propping noise in the tmj and limitation of jaw movement the negative characteristics include absence of any radiographic changes and also lack of tenderness on tmj on palpation via the external auditory meatus and also um, apart from these there are associated symptoms in the head face and neck region coming to the management of mpds so the goal of our treatment should be inactivation of the trigger point prevention of recurrence of the condition and also correcting the perpetuating factors so management can be broadly classified into pharmacological and non pharmacological means pharmacological include use of nsaids muscle relaxants and the anxiety agents and the depressants and the inflammatory agents etc the non pharmacological means includes patient education behavioral or relaxation techniques self care laser therapy physiotherapy intraoral appliance therapy like occlusal splints etc so first we have to educate the patient about the condition and also advise the patient to eliminate hard and chewy food which helps to reduce loading forces on the joint and also to rest the hypertonic jaw muscles and in self care we have to advise the patient for moist hot compression 10 to 20 minutes twice daily the behavioral or relaxation technique include 
मेडिटेशन डीप प्रोग्रेसिव और जेकबसन प्रोग्रेसिव मजल रिलैक्सेशन टेक्निक्स हिप्नोसिस एक्सेट्रा फिजियोथेरापी इंक्लूड पैसिव स्ट्रेचिंग टेंस एक्सेट्रा सो देर आर सर्टन पैसिव जो स्ट्रेचिंग डिवाइसेस विच आर यूज टू ट्रीट एक्यूट एंड क्रॉनिक जॉब पेन एंड इन टेंस इट इज इन्वॉल्विंग द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोड्स कनेक्टेड टू अ स्मॉल बैटरी पावर्ड यूनिट along the painful muscle and it is a form of electroanalgesia so in order to know in detail about this jacobson's progressive muscle relaxation technique or about the transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation you can either comment below this video or you can mail me there is also trigger point therapy and injections for mtds so in trigger point therapy also called as spray and stretch therapy we spray a vapor coolant like fluoromethane over the involved muscle in the direction of referred pain pattern which is immediately followed by a general stretch of the muscle this can be repeated until full muscle length has been reached and there is trigger point injection where we use normal saline local anesthesia and botulinum toxin so these injections disrupt the trigger point mechanically as well as chemically resulting in relaxation and lengthening of the muscle fiber so the injected solution causes vasodilation in that area which results in dilution of the chemicals which are deposited in the muscle and also removal of the accumulated chemicals through diffusion let us discuss the role of occlusal splints in tmd therapy so what is an occlusal splint gpt defines it as any removable artificial occlusal surface affecting the relationship of mandible to the maxilla used for diagnosis or therapy so actually an occlusal splint works by unloading the condyle and in effect protecting the tmj and articular disc from degeneration and excessive articular strain and the main function of most of the occlusal splint is to alter an occlusion so it does not interfere with complete seating of the condyle now let us see the main purposes of occlusal splint it provides diagnostic information protects the teeth cheek or tongue in bruxures stabilizes unstable occlusion and promote jaw muscle relaxation so here you can see there is a deflective occlusal interference such as a high crown or deflective tooth incline which activates muscle hyperactivity and pain is seen in the masticatory muscle to give the impression of a tmd and here when we give an anterior splint it separates the interfering molar from condyle permitting the condyle disc assembly to seat up into centric relation so this also eliminates the trigger for muscle hyperactivity and allows the inferior lateral pterygoid muscle to release so thus peaceful comfortable muscle activity resumes quickly so occlusal splints are very effective in diagnosing whether deflective occlusal interferences are the cause of occluso muscle pain coming to the major types of occlusal splints used in tmd therapy so there are three types stabilization splint repositioning splint and soft splint stabilization splint made up of hard acrylic with full coverage of maxillary or mandibular dentition and centric occlusion then the repositioning splint again of hard acrylic with full coverage of maxillary or mandibular dentition but with inclines to guide mandible to a more anterior position so here the goal is to advance mandible to a more therapeutic position to maintain disc in proper alignment to reduce pain and discomfort so this has got well defined fossa on the occlusal surface to actively guide mandible to a more protrusive position the third one is the soft splint which is similar to hard stabilization splint but made from a flexible material and again the type of splint utilized depends upon the diagnosis and let us see the advantages of occlusal splints so this treatment option is very simple with fewer side effects cost effective non invasive and also have better patient compliance and occlusal splint promote muscle relaxation by providing a platform for the teeth that allows for equal distribution of tooth contacts immediate posterior tooth disclusion in all movements and also reduced stress on the joint and this will be followed by neuromuscular harmony for optimal function and comfort and again when a splint is inserted there is an adaptation of the jaw to a new resting postural position and occlusal splint helps in decreasing the muscular effort resulting in relaxation of the muscles and hence tmj so in this figure you can see a qua splint also called as an hydrostatic appliance here it consists of bilateral water filled plastic chambers 
which are needed to equalize the byte force and this depends upon the or this works on the pascal slow so occlusal splint is a very important topic it usually comes as a short note where you have to include the classification of occlusal splint the theories about the action of occlusal splints etc so if you want to know in detail or if you need a separate session on occlusal splints do comment below this video we have come to the end of this session to summarize the treatment modalities can be broadly classified into non invasive minimally invasive and invasive the non invasive includes the use of occlusal or stabilization splints pharmacotherapy physical therapy etc minimally invasive ones include intraarticular injections and trigger point injections arthrocentesis arthroscopy and invasive technique include arthroplasty and also total joint replacement finally concluding the session so as per dawson temporomandibular disorder is any disorder that affects or is affected by deformity disease misalignment or dysfunction of the temporomandibular articulation so this includes occlusal deflection of the temporomandibular joints and associated responses in the musculature and now we know that the cause of tmd is considered to be multifactorial and the first and foremost step in management of tmd is proper diagnosis only with proper diagnosis and treatment planning we'll be able to provide our patients the most appropriate tmd therapy and also long term symptomatic relief so these are my references thank you all for watching this session please do hit the like button if you find this video useful and also please do share the, my videos among your friends if you are new to this channel prostha hub please subscribe and support me and if you have any queries or feedbacks you can either comment below this video or you can mail me at this mail id so i hope you have followed tmd very well and all the best for your exams we'll meet in our next session